Thank you for joining me in this nugget as we look at creating and managing service accounts within Google Cloud. So what exactly are service accounts, why do we need them, and how do we create and manage them within Google Cloud? Well, service accounts are not very similar to user accounts, which we are very familiar with, where we have a username and password that we use to gain access to the various resources that we have. However, they are also used for identity and authentication, but to gain access to a different system. It could be maybe some form of authentication that is required between an application and an instance, or maybe access to various Google APIs. And therefore, service accounts cannot represent a single human being or a user, rather they can actually be used in such a way that a number of users who have been granted access to that particular service account can access quite a number of resources that are aligned with that particular service account. So let's say, for example, that we have an application within our environment, right? And that particular application is running on, let's say, Compute Engine, and we want the application to only have access to create objects within cloud storage. So what we can do is that we can create a service account for that particular application and then grant that application the role to only be able to create objects within your environment. So you can actually have various service accounts that are actually taking care of a specific function within your environment and ensure that all the users that are actually accessing that particular service account are only able to perform that particular role. And this simply enhances our security and ensures that access is only given to relevant resources. Let's go ahead and look at how we can create a service account within Google Cloud. So the first thing is that our service account should be aligned with a particular project that we have within our environment and we can simply do that by selecting a project of our choice from there. And once we've identified the project that we'd like to deal with, we can go to our menu and head to I am where we can simply access our service accounts by clicking on that tab over there. So in here, we can actually create a service account by clicking on that button over there. All we have to do is to provide a service account name. So let us say this is going to be dev team service account. So once we have done that, you notice that we have a service account ID over here. And this is very important as it functions as the identity of this particular service account. So that is an email address. And we can actually recycle or maybe regenerate that by clicking on that refresh button over there. And we can actually have different service account IDs, etc. But this is very important for the identity of this particular service account. And like I said earlier, the identity of a service account functions in such a way that the roles and permissions that are set in that particular service account will directly translate in the kind of resources that can be accessed for a particular service that you have within your environment. All right, so now that we have a service account ID that is set up over there, we can also give it a description below here just to give information that describes the purpose of this particular service account. Once that is done, we can go ahead and click on create and continue. And here we can grant this service account access to project. Notice that here it says we can grant this service account access to that project dev team so that the service account has permission to complete specific actions for the various resources that we have within this particular project. And if that's something that we'd like to do, we can just go and manage our roles down here by clicking on that down arrow. And we can decide whether we'd like to use this for BigQuery Transfer Service Agent, or maybe we'd like to use this as a browser, or would like to give it access to be an editor, owner, etc. And there are lots and lots of other roles that we can deal with down here. So depending on what exactly we'd like to achieve, if we would like to give this particular service account access to edit the various resources that we have, we can go ahead and select editor over there. And once we have done that, if we needed to set up conditions as to maybe at what time or when we'd like to have this implemented, we can also go ahead and set up various conditions in this area. We'll not set up any for now, all right? But if we needed to add additional roles, we can click on that add button to add additional roles. We can also delete delete any row that is no longer relevant for this particular service account. For now, let's go ahead and click on continue. And in this section, we can now grant users access to this particular service account. So for instance, if we'd like to add a user and a service account user roles, notice here it says grant users the permission to deploy jobs and virtual machines with this service account. So we can simply go and look for maybe a user by the name of John, for example, right there we are. And we can have this user as one of the users within our environment who has access to this this particular service account and giving them the allowance to be able to perform various tasks that are aligned with this particular service account. We also have service account admin roles and over here we can simply grant users permission to administer this particular service account. And this might be for somebody who might be in a senior position or somebody who is simply in charge of this particular project. So let's say over there we can say Jen and then we can add Jen as one of the service account admins for this particular service account. Once that is done, we'll click on done 
and our service account would be completed in this section. Notice that over here, we can now say over there, we can see the status, we can see the name. We can also see that by selecting this checkmark over here, we are able to delete this particular service account. We can even manage access to this particular service account. There are quite a lot of things that we can do in this area. We can add a principal, meaning another user who can access this particular service account. So by clicking on add principal, notice that this is very similar to what we did previously. Other than that, we have this section over here with the various roles and principals. And in case you simply want to collect the statistics for this particular service account, you can see over there, we've got the owner over there, you can see the service account user, etc., etc. So this is mainly what you can deal with when it comes to dealing with service accounts. From the actions area, we also have features that allow us to manage details, manage permissions, manage keys, view metrics, view logs, disable, and even delete this particular service account that we have. Under the logs, for example, if we click on view logs over here, we can see access to this particular service account over a period of time. We can see whether there has been any usage logs or any changes that have been done to this particular service account. And you can see whether this was done in the past hour or whether it was six hours ago, etc. And this information can be very important, especially when you're carrying out an audit or you're simply carrying out an investigation to see whether any changes have been made to that particular service account. In case you're suspecting compromise or anything that warrants an investigation to be done on that particular service account. Come with me to metrics. Over here, we can actually see quite a lot of information from service account usage service account usage per API, authentication traffic, and quite more. And we can even go as far as creating alerting policies that will inform us where a particular threshold is actually met. So we have just began to unearth a lot of information about service accounts. And as we proceed in this scale, we'll look at what we can do more as far as managing service account and managing identity and access management within Google Console is concerned. For now, my friend, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching and remember to hit that subscribe button to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. And if you are new to IT or just keen to sharpen your IT skills, then be sure to check out cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.